One of the most common maintenance items in a Tesla, in my experience, has been the 12 volt battery. Uh, we originally had ours replaced under the CPO warranty back two years and three weeks ago, and we just started getting the error again, as you can see right here. So as I was doing research, trying to decide what to do about this, I of course contacted Tesla and their price was $231.13 to replace the battery for us. Then I asked, okay, what if you just give me the battery and I install it myself? And so in that case, they quoted me $165. So they are quoting roughly $55 for their labor, which is actually pretty reasonable, especially because of the convenience of them just doing it right here in my driveway. I don't even have to take the car anywhere. So I considered doing that, but I really don't like the battery that they use because it's just a lead acid deep cycle battery. And obviously it does not last terribly long. Online, I have seen anecdotes from others saying, you know, they got like four years out of it or something to that effect. Uh, but I really don't like the idea of spending, you know, up over $200 every couple of years for something that potentially if I were, if there were a better technology, I could install and have it last even longer and not have the hassle or risk that it's going to go bad when I'm on a road trip or just away from the house in general. Because when the total battery goes down, uh, it disables the entire car and you have to, uh, in, in my car, it has the nose cone on front so I can just take off the nose cone and uh, connect some jumper cables to it and you can technically actually jump the car. It's a little bit different than a traditional gas car though. In any case, I just want to eliminate this hassle from my life as much as possible, if that is possible. So uh, in doing some additional research online, I found a company uh, called Omnu. I'm not totally sure how they pronounce it, uh, but I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the description down below to their battery. They sell a lithium ion replacement battery for all of the Teslas. Uh, mine happens to be a Tesla Model S, and so I looked at that battery. Their battery is, uh, I, I've asked them various questions about it, and it's a prismatic or pouch style battery uh, that is in the same form factor as the traditional lead acid battery. So it fits in that same place and it has the same uh, polarity on the terminals and things like that. Um, and so I looked at the price of it though, and it was $438, and that's shipped, so that, that's you know um, getting it in hand. Uh, so obviously more expensive, uh, but if it lasts even just as long as their warranty of four years, then it actually would be breaking even pretty much at that point. Uh, when you calculate in the price of labor, well, if you look at the $160 price uh, of the Tesla battery uh, versus this one, then the break even point is probably actually closer to five years. Um, but in any case, I, I'm not too concerned about um, that I, I think that lithium ion has proven that, that it will last a lot longer. There are some other questions about this battery, like uh, low temperature protection for lithium batteries. And when I asked them about this, they said that it's designed to work within the parameters of this car and the charge parameters of the car, because keep in mind the firmware of the car isn't getting updated in this case. So it thinks it has a lead acid battery in there. So it's going to be functioning within the voltages that the firmware sends to it for a lead acid battery. So in any case, I contacted the company and they agreed to give me 50% off the battery to make a YouTube video about uh, the installation of it and how well it performs initially and how the installation goes. So let's dive in and I'm just going to show you a time lapse here with some brief intermittent uh, videos showing uh, clips of the steps of doing it a little bit, but I'm not really trying to recreate the installation video that they make. And I'll put a card to uh, above here that is a video to their channel showing how to install this battery, at least in a Model S, which happens to match exactly what my Model S is. So let's get started. The first thing that I need to do is come in here to the safety and security menu and hit the power off button and tell it, yes, I want to power off. So that will turn off the whole car and then I'm going to go disconnect the high power uh, voltage disconnect. In order to get to the high voltage disconnect, I first had to clear out all the things that I had in my frunk and then uh, take it out as well as the plastic shrouds around it. Throughout this process, I referenced the YouTube video of their instructions on my phone. It really is a pretty straightforward process and there's nothing very difficult about this. Uh, right up there, you can see I'm having to uh, disassemble the air filter housing. And that's the most annoying part, frankly, to have to get in there to d disconnect the high voltage disconnect. And that's probably the hardest thing to do. Over here, I'm now taking off the support mechanism for the old lead acid battery. 
and getting ready to swap in the new lithium battery. Okay, so I'm down to the point where we have disconnected the 12 volt battery. As you can see, I removed the frunk and you saw all this in the time lapse. I had to disconnect the, the air filter area over here so I can get to the uh, high voltage disconnect, which is right here. You can see that, that's the, the receptacle. This right here is the plug and it just has a loop of wires there that disables it. So uh, all, all the electricity is now off on the car. And then over here, I unscrewed these terminals right here. And so now I can just take this battery out, which I'll do off camera because I only have one hand. Um, and the new battery is right here in this box. This is how it arrived. So it has a carrying handle there, some warranty information. And then this is the foam packaging on the top of the battery. This is my first time seeing the battery myself. Just barely arrived. And there we have it. So let's get that installed. One thing to note is it is really light. Like you can see here, I'm just holding it with one hand and it feels remarkably light uh, compared to the other one. Let's, let's put it on a scale and see what the difference is. Okay, here's the two batteries. Let's try the lead acid battery. First, it was hard to pick up. According to my bathroom scale, it is 30.8 pounds, which I believe that. And then let's see how much this Omu battery is. 7.4 pounds. That is so much lighter. <laughs> it's remarkable, the difference. All right, so let's put this in its new home. And as you can see, it fits right there perfectly. The positive terminal is on the correct side, which is backwards from um, normal. A lot of batteries in the world is the other way around. Uh, but that looks nice. Let's get it hooked up and we'll see how well it works. One other thing to note is that uh, when you buy the OMU battery, they offer it with these uh, lug adapters. Uh, where that comes into play is right here on a traditional battery, there's usually just the lug sticking out of the battery. But here it's a threaded uh, flat little spot here. And so uh, that's what these lugs are for. Now this lug right here is what came with my car. And on the website it says that these are not needed for my age of car, but I ordered them anyway because I wanted to see the difference. And so this is the Omu lug. It looks uh, brass or copper and it's pretty heavy and it comes with uh, a washer, a lock washer, and then this bolt. The Tesla original one has this odd shape on the bottom. I'm not sure what that's for. And then it just has the single uh, bolt here. Now the negative side is a little bit smaller as you can see here compared to the positive lug which is just a tiny bit bigger but it has the same bolt and everything there, so I'm going to get that installed and then we'll put it all back together. Okay, here's my first observation of uh, something that maybe isn't quite fitting right. You'll see here it's down in the bottom of the tray, and yet up here, if you look at this threaded pole, which is what the bracket threads down to, it actually only is threaded up here on this top about an inch or inch and a half, and then it stops being threaded right here, right on the edge of the top of this Omni battery. And so if I take the bracket and put it on the battery, you'll see that it's sitting all the way down here and up here. It is going down against the top of the battery, but you'll see right there the threaded elements, or the threaded area of that shaft are actually too high. And so when I put a nut down on this, all the way down as far as it would go, the battery was still loose under this bracket. So uh, I happen to have some packaging material laying around. This is some just basic half inch pink foam and I'm gonna put this underneath the battery. It'll help with vibrations anyway, and then it'll also lift it up just a little bit so that it's snug underneath this bracket. Okay, I've now installed that foam down here. You can see it just underneath the battery. I've tightened down this bolt snugly. It's not as far down as it used to be because the battery's elevated just a little bit. Uh, and then I've tightened this bolt up here, or that nut, and then put this bolt in here. So when I try to move the battery now, it is rock solid and just gives the tiniest little bit with the foam underneath, but it's definitely solid and a good position. While I was getting that bracket reinstalled, Lucy kindly brought me a snack, and then I got that put back together. And then I worked on putting everything else back together, the reconnection of the high voltage disconnect. I took opportunity here to go ahead and put in a new cabin air filter, and then reconnected uh, all of the housing for that air filter, as well as 
everything else. Something that they do warn about when you first connect the 12 volt battery is that there will be arcing. And so I used a capacitor that just lets that inrush be slowed down and then I reconnected the terminals. And then at this point, I also took the opportunity to take my thumbnail picture for this video. You can see in here, the MCU is starting up still. And over here, the binnacle shows everything as normal and it doesn't show the 12 volt battery error there anymore. Now I'm going to reassemble the frunk area and I'll be done and then I'll summarize my experience. Reassembling the frunk is pretty straightforward and is obviously just the reverse of having taken it all apart uh, and make sure to get those lights plugged in. Something a mobile service technician taught me once is you can use your drill to get the carpet back underneath this weather stripping all the way around much more quickly if you put the drill underneath the weather stripping and the carpet underneath and then just use your drill like the final part of assembly does not require any tools and it's just getting these plastic shrouds back in place. And just like that, it is all done and reinstalled. Uh, it's been an hour and a half and that is including me having filmed all this and having to go find tools and stuff. So this is really a quick procedure if you had all of your tools that needed right ready and you were not trying to film it, it's not that terribly difficult. In hindsight, the question uh, that I would ask myself is, would I do this again? And uh, cost-wise, that's undetermined, right? Because it kind of depends on how long this battery lasts. Uh, but the warranty is for four years, and so uh, that is the majority of the time it'll take to break even, uh, even paying full price for this battery. Um, if you were to pay Tesla to do it versus buy this, Tesla is going to do the labor for that uh, num number that I gave earlier. Um, the $234 or something like that. Uh, they're going to do the labor in that case, whereas this is $438 without labor to install it. So you have to do that yourself. So uh, I think if it lasts at least five years, no problem. It, it will be a break-even point that from that point forward, you are not, um, uh, it, that it is a cheaper option. Now, that being said, I don't think that cheaper is necessarily better if the performance while you have the battery and while you're driving your car is better. What I'm getting at is if the battery fails every, let's say a battery failed every year, and yet um, it's really cheap. Well, do you still want to deal with the hassle and the risk of that battery going bad when you're out and about and the car gets completely shut down and you have to jump start it? Or would you rather just have a long lasting battery that you have no issues with for perhaps up to eight years? I'm thinking this one might get. Um, th that to me is actually worth paying extra for not having to worry about getting stranded uh, uh, somewhere else or just having the hassle of having to go through this amount of labor every two years, which is how long my last one lasted, right? So it's nuanced. There's a lot of different ways to look at it, but I think overall this is a really good solution. Uh, this company has been around for six years selling this battery and uh, they have tested it in really cold conditions, in um, in, and they've done a fair amount of testing. So from what I can tell, it's a quality product that it looks like it's going to last us a long time. And I'm really grateful that I, at least I hope, will not have to deal with the hassle of replacing this battery as often as the Tesla supplied battery. Now, uh, I did a one year in review video, which I, I can post right here. And then I also did a two year in review video, which I will also post here. Uh, I intend to do a three year in review video, but it's going to be a really short video at this point in time because uh, since the warranty expired back in May of this year, um, which was our two-year mark of ownership, uh, we have done nothing to this car, no maintenance at all, uh, until now, the replacing this 12-volt battery. So there's not a lot to talk about. But by May of next year, uh, right now it's uh, November of 2021, so we'll see uh, if there's a lot more to talk about. Otherwise, it might be just a really short video. In any case, in the future, when this battery is defunct, it might be way down the road. Uh, I'll let you know how it lasted. But in the meantime, right now, everything is working fine in the car. The thing I like about lithium ion batteries as well is they have a very constant voltage that is up high. So um, the uh, devices in the car have a healthy amount of voltage and there's less errors and, and things like that and reasons to reboot the car. Uh, I'm not saying that I had a lot of problems previously. Um, but I just know that from working with other projects, my RV project right now, I've got a bunch of 12 volt batteries there as well, lithium ion. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to see what it's like to uh, install the battery, at least from my perspective. And uh, when you have your 12 volt battery fail, I would uh, urge you to consider this uh, lithium ion replacement, this Omni battery. 
And if you are interested in getting 5% off, if you'd like to buy one, I will put a discount code here on the screen and also a link in the description down below. And with that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.